I still remember the first photograph that I shot of the night sky. It was on film, a 1600 Asa slide film. I had gone to Nebsarai, a village south of Delhi, now considered very much part of ever-growing Delhi. The photograph was of constellation Centaurus. I had shot the entire film that night on a home-built Ponce platform, belonging to a French amateur astronomer, Gilles Murio. In the photo lab, the film was supposed to be push process to reach 1600 ASA. Alas, the photo, set, photo lab processed it only at 400 ASA. Only one photograph came out nicely in the entire 36 frame film. Omega Centauri was visible in the photograph. That one slide was my proud possession for a long time. The observation, circumstances, the borrowed camera and the Ponce mount as well as the slide is still vivid in my mind, even after 23 years have passed. So unique are the joys of astrophotography. I welcome you all to this webcast and hope that it will inspire a few into the wonderful world of astrophotography. I will discuss equipment, methods, efforts, some tricks and magic involved in shooting stunning night sky panoramas commonly known as tripod astrophotography. Let us first list some essential items with which to begin. A camera. Which is the best camera? The one that you already have at home, digital or film. But if you are going to buy a, a new camera, I'd recommend the Canon 1000D digital SLR camera. It's, it's a fairly new camera. The price is reasonable. It's available in India and it has a good qualities to be your favorite camera for astrophotography. Low electronic noise, live view on screen, long exposures are possible, can be computer controlled easily, proprietary software is provided along with the camera and many other technical benefits for astrophotography. The lens that comes along with the Canon digital SLR is an 18 to 55 zoom lens. The lens is quite useful and works well for astrophotography. While zoom lenses are good for daylight photography and landscape photography, they are not good for star photography. Stars in the sky are very exacting, point source of light. Any lens which cannot reproduce stars at point on the sensor is not good. While the same lens may have distortions which are not visible in daylight photographs, Star pictures will be easily seen as distorted, especially towards the edge of the field. Prime lenses, fixed focal lens, uh, focal length lenses that is, are better for astrophotography. They have less glass inside, absorb less light, are more accurate and better built. Prime lenses are more expensive too. Think of buying a 50mm, 135mm, 200 mm or even longer uh, prime lens according to your budget. The 200 mm prime lens from Canon produces pinpoint star images till the edge even in a full frame Canon 5D camera. For a film camera you need a cable release. The cable release though not easily available these days is a device that will keep your film camera open for long durations when the camera is kept in bulb position. A remote control is an essential item to get with your digital camera purchase. It allows you to trigger the camera from far without touching the camera and so avoiding the inevitable shake to your setup. Digital SLR cameras require a remote control for exposures of more than 30 seconds. You need to press the remote once to open the shutter and then again to close the shutter when the camera is set to bulb mode. An intervalometer, though wired, is a much more useful device than the remote control. In an intervalometer, you can set the exposure time, interval between each exposure, total number of exposures, even unlimited exposures, and the delay before the first exposure is taken. After setting all these parameters, you press the start button and off you go to your second camera setup 
or maybe go sleep. Just make sure the camera battery is charged enough to last all the exposures that you have set. The last essential item you need is a tripod. Get a good tripod if you are buying a new one. If you already have a tripod and want to wait a while before you get a new one, make this tripod better by hanging a cloth bag full of weights or bricks under the tripod. Makes it sturdier and stable. Also, do not extend the legs of the tripod fully. Don't even think of extending the central bar of the tripod. If you can tie the tripod down to a permanent structure like a balcony railing, football goal post or similar thing, even better. There are a few pieces of equipment not essential but highly desirable for astrophotography. Lens hood for the particular lens that you are going to shoot with. Extra battery for your camera. If you are photographing for the entire night, almost certainly you will need it. AC adapter for your camera. If you happen to be lucky uh, enough to have electricity at your site, then uh, an AC adapter will make at least one worry obsolete. Dew heaters for your camera lens and the power required for it. If your site is near a river or a lake or in the monsoon season during high humidity percentage nights, dew will form on the front lens and will fog your photographs. Faint stars will vanish and brighter ones will spread their light over a large area. Worse, you can't even wipe the dew off your lenses. It leaves streaks and returns in no time. A hair dryer may be used, but a strip of slightly heated tape wrapped around the lens hood will heat up the lens slightly and work wonders in keeping dew away from the front lens. Be careful with those wide angle and fisheye lenses. The dew heater may appear in the field of view. An angle gauge, digital or gravity assisted, is also called an inclinometer and a compass. These two little devices are useful to set your camera at a particular angle. In some sky events such as an iridium flare, you know the altitude and azimuth of the flare visible from your sight beforehand. It would be a good idea to set up your camera to such known angles and get ready much before the event and try some practice shots to determine the exposure that you are going to shoot at. Construct for yourself a Bartino mask, very useful for accurate focusing. Lastly, don't forget uh, a big storage card for your camera. Some astrophotographers prefer to carry a laptop in the field. Then you need to carry all the power to run fully for your observing session. Then there are other uh, astrophotographers who just want to rely on their intervalometer for automating the exposure sequences.